Good day all. Today we are going to be looking at sources of government revenue and federation accounts, which have been part of the sources of funding into government accounts that we have introduced in our previous lecture. So today we are going to be looking at the various sources of government revenue. How do government generate revenue and how the governments are expected to utilize this revenue? So under the course of study, we are going to take a look at the various sources of government revenue. We will look at revenue collection agencies, classification of government revenue, we will have the revenue heads, the value added tax, federation accounts, consolidated revenue fund accounts, development fund accounts, and contingency fund accounts. We are talking about the sources of government revenue. Governments generate revenue through various sources, which include the following. We have the taxation, we have the fines, we have fees, we have grants, foreign investments, public debts or borrowing. We have sales of national assets. All these form part of the basis at which governments generate revenue. So government revenue refers to the income generated by government from various sources. The following are the general sources of government revenue. We have taxation. Taxation is a compulsory levy that has been imposed by the government on its citizens and corporate body, usually payable at different rates, depending on the nature of economic activity conducted by an individual or firm. Economic activities in terms of business enterprises, individual earning salary from either the government or private ownership including the government agencies, are all subject to payment of taxation into the general post of the government for the purpose of governments to be able to cater for welfare and security of the nation. We have fees. Fees are payments made by users of public services on a cost-sharing basis. Any individual or corporate entity that receive services from the government or make use of government property, we have to make a payment, which is usually known as fees. We have fines. Fines relate to penalties that are imposed by government against law breaches. Anyone that go against the rules and regulation laid down by the government, either of the federation or the state or the local government, are subject to the payment of fines or any law breaches. We have grants. Grants refers to the non repayable money received by the government from another government which with the aim of helping that government. And this usually come in case, or in, in most cases, when there are crises or country are facing flood or any emergency challenges. So this kind of aid will be granted to the governments that are in need. And this also form part of the main sources of government revenue. We have foreign investments. 
the amount obtained from foreign investment constitutes revenue to the government. That is, governments within a certain country can invest in foreign investments, either the federal government, the state, or the local government has the opportunity or privilege to invest in the foreign projects or investment. So the income that will be generated from the investments is regarded as foreign investment revenue, which is one part of the government re revenue. We have public debts or borrowing, and these usually come up when the governments are running on a deficit budgeting, which, in, which entails that governments are running more expenditure than what the government are generating as revenue. So this tends the government to look out for external sources by borrowing internally or borrowing externally to cater for the needs of the society. And this become necessary in times of financial crisis and emergency like war. And this may be raised internally or externally. We have sales of national assets. Selling of national assets through privatization programs has also constituted to a significant sources of government revenue across the globe. Whereby the government can also look out on how to generate funds to cater for capital projects in a state or in the country. And when there is availability of funds, the government can repurchase such national assets. I hope we are following. Yes. Are we there? Okay. Yes, sir. Can you call my attention for any question? I hope I'm not too fast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, not too fast. Please, example of these fees that you are talking about. I want to know the exam, one of those examples of this fees that you're talking about. Okay. We have uh, government agencies, we have government uh, ministries. For instance, let's make use of the general hospital, or we make use of we make use of the national assets. Okay, we can make use of courts. Courts. So whenever any of individual that want to submit a case through the courts, you have to make a fee payment for such services that you'll be expecting from the government. Another one is that of general hospital. There are certain amounts that you are going to pay for services that you are expecting from government. That's also a fee on the services that government will render to individual. And the purpose of this type of fee is to subsidize the rate at which individual will be making huge amount of payment for services that will be rendered. I believe that is clear. Thank you, sir. All right. So, sorry, we sir. Revenue we... collection. Okay. What you just explained now, can we still take this um, NHIS as an example also? Yes, it's also a sample because you will pay for services that you uh, that will be rendered, but yeah, is it as a subsidized rate? Rates. But at least you need to make a fee, a payment for that services that you receive or benefits. All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Let us move on to revenue collection agencies in Nigeria. As we've just mentioned, the general sources or the main sources of government revenue. We are having collection agencies that are in charge or with the responsibility of collecting government revenue.
So governments have several collectors that are saddled with the responsibility of monitoring the income that are generated by governments and which are expected to be remitted to the government's treasury post at the end of a month. Several agencies are responsible for revenue collection from the various sources. So we, have, we will be discussing on each of these revenue collection agencies and their duties with their functions. So they include, we have the NNPC, the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation. We have the FIRS, that is Federal Inland Revenue Services. We have the SBIRS, that is the State Board of Internal Revenue Services. We have the DPR, Department of Petroleum Resources. We have the NCS, Nigerian Customs Service. We have the FAAC. These are committee that are saddled with the responsibility of allocating general income to the three chairs of government. They are the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee. We have the SJLGAAC, State Joint Local Government Account Allocation Committee. And we have the RAMAPAC, the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission. So these are the major revenue collection agencies that we have in Nigeria. So we start with the NNPC, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. Corporation. The NNPC was established and they are meant to optimize the use of scarce indigenous human resources available in the oil industry. The NNPC has three major activities, which include, we have the upstream, we have the midstream, and we have the downstream activities, which include from the registration, exploration, refinery, and the sales of oil products. The NNPC has a sole responsibility for the upstream and downstream developments, and is also charged with the regulating and supervising the oil industry on behalf of the Nigerian government. Other functions or activities of the NNPC, which also serve as one of the revenue collection agencies to the country, the specific functions and rules include the following. We have the exploration and production, refining, purchasing, and marketing of petroleum, petroleum products and its byproducts. What are the byproducts? We're talking about the crude oil, we have the petroleum, we have the deep MS, we have the diesel, and we have some other byproducts, which include the kerosene, we have the oil, engine oil, among others. So these are one among the other objectives of the NNPC. They also provide an operating pipelines, tanker ships, and other facilities for the conveyance of crude oil. So one of the operations that the NNPC operates, so they are the one in charge of providing an operating pipeline for the transportation of the crude oil from the exploration to the tank farms where a tanker ships, where the crude oil will be transported to the refinery before it will now be conveyed back to the country and it will now be generally attributed to the sole sales production 
Source Sales Department for General Sales and Consumption. They also have the function of constructing, equipping, and maintaining tank farms, as well as research and development. And lastly, doing anything for the purpose of giving effect of agreements entered into by the federal government with a view to seeking participation by government or the corporation in activities that are connected with petroleum. In summary, the general purpose of the NNPC, they are the one that supersede and oversee all the activities of oil and gas industry. So we have some other departments that also works together with the NNPC in order to generate revenue. And among them is the DPR, Department of Petroleum Resources. We are coming to that. Another agency is the Federal Inland Revenue Services, FIRS. The FIRS is to control and administer the different taxes, which include, we have the Company Income Tax Act, we have the Petroleum Profit Tax Act, we have the Value Added Tax Act, we have the Personal Income Tax Act in respect of residents of the Federal Capital Territory. We have the members of the Nigerian Police Force, MPF, we have the members of Armed Forces of Nigeria, as well as staff of Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs and non-residents. And also Capital Gain Tax Act, Stamp Duty Act in respect of residents of the Federal Capital Territory. We have the corporate bodies and non-residents. And laws specified in the first schedule or other laws made from time to time by the National Assembly or other regulations made here under by the government of the Federation. And also to account for all taxes collected. In a summary, the FIRS oversees the taxation collection. So they are the one that coordinates all the tax acts and ensure strict compliance by all users. So the acts that were created for the tax collections include the following. We have the company income tax, which oversee the taxation that are relating to corporate entity. We have the Petroleum Profit Tax Act, which also states the activities of the tax production, uh, sorry, the tax collection on petroleum profits, on profits that will be generated from petroleum and some other activities. We have the Value Added Tax Act, and this is basically on consumptions of goods and services rendered. We have the members of the Armed Forces of Nigeria, as well as staff of ministries, foreign affairs, and, and non-residents and the tax collection for the government workers, which will be excluded from the states. And it is the responsibility of the FRS to cater for the collection of taxes that are relating to the federal government workers, which include, we have the members of the armed forces of Nigeria, as well as the staff of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and non-residents. We have the Capital Gain Tax Act, Stamp Duty Act in respect of the Federal Capital Territory. We have the corporate bodies and non-residents. And all these laws were being specified in the first schedule of the Nigerian constitution and other laws that will be made from time to time by the National Assembly or other regulations made under the government of the 
federation and to account for all taxes collection, which is part of the responsibility of the FIRS. They are the one to coordinate and monitor all tax collected. Accordingly, the FRS has been striving to operate a transparent and an efficient tax system that optimizes tax revenue collection and voluntary compliance. I believe we are following. Yes, sir. All right. We move on to the State Board of Internal Revenue Services, SBIRS. As we are having the FIRS, which relates to the federal government, same, we're also having under the state tax collection. And this is governed to all state revenue. Now, all the federation, the state board of inland internal revenue services were being established for tax collection within the states. So, all states has their responsibility to generate their revenue. At the state level, the Personal Income Tax Act of 1993 established the State Board of Internal Revenue Services, SBIRS, with responsibility for personal income taxes of individuals and non corporate bodies, except the residents of the Federal Capital Territory. Don't forget that the federal workers were being treated and managed by the FIRS. So all the tax collection pay from the armed forces, police, members of the uh, Nigerian police force, as well as staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and non-residents will be excluded from the State Board of Internal Revenue Services. Knowing for, knowingly that all these federal workers we have been deployed to all the states in the federation, but their revenue will be collected at the federal level, which will be the representatives of all FIRS within the states. So this will be exempted or will be excluded from the State Board of Internal Revenue Services. Generally, the State Board of internal revenue services has the power to and be responsible for the following functions. One, assessing, collecting, and accounting for all taxes, fees, and levies in the state. And the Commissioner of Finance is to prescribe the manner in which the board is to account for the taxes, fees, and levies collected. So it is the responsibility of the Commissioner of Finance in this state to account for all the taxes collection and the manner in which this will be remitted. Another functions of the SBRRS is to supervise the collection of all revenues due to the state government with other ministries, extra ministerial departments, for starters and government bodies. What does this imply? Within a state, we can have a task collection that is relating to other states or that is relating to the federal government. So it is one of the function of the SBRS to supervise the collection of all revenue that are due to the state or those that are due to other states within the federation. They are also served with the responsibility to revise 
all obsolete rates collectible by the board and initiate review and also advise the governor on any obsolete rates. And this is part of what will be submitted to the state assembly. Deliberation will be made on it and final assent will be given by the governor. They also have the responsibility to liaise on tax and revenue matters with the federal government directly through the joint tax board. And this usually come up when there are discrepancies between state tax collection or between state and the federal government tax collection. And to make recommendations where appropriate to the joint tax board on tax policy, tax reform, tax registration, tra tax treaties, and ex exemptions as may be required from time to time. Also, to administer the provisions of the Personal Income Tax Act of the 1993 as amended and relevant tax laws in the state. And lastly, to generally control the management of the service on matters of policy, subject to the provisions of the edicts and imposing discipline on employees of the state's internal revenue services. Any questions so far? Can we continue? Let's continue. All right. Thanks, sir. We have the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR. At the onset, petroleum matters were handled by the Adron hydrocarbon section of the Ministry of Lagos Affairs. And that was when the Lagos states was still the federal capital, which reported directly to the governor general. And this is during the military regime. So the unit kept records on matters that are relating to exploration and importation of petroleum products. It also enforced safety and other regulations on matters which were then mostly product importation and distribution. As the activities of the petroleum industry expanded, the unit was upgraded to a petroleum division within the Ministry of Mines and Power. What are the responsibilities of DPR, Department of Petroleum Resources? They are supervising all petroleum industry operations being carried out under licenses and leases in the country. They are also in charge of monitoring the petroleum industry operations to ensure that they are all in line with the national goals and aspirations, including those relating to flare down and domestic gas supply obligation. So they are one of the activities. This, these are part of the activities of the DPR. So most of the time, they also, also go around to ensure strict compliance with petroleum pricing by enforcing the general pricing that will have been released by the NNPC. And for any violators, the DPR will sanction any violators. They usually sanction any violators of this pricing policy, ensuring that health, safety, and environment regulations conform to national and international best oil field practice. That is, they ensure all oil industry are complying with health, safety, and environmental regulations. And part of this health, safety, and environmental regulations will be that all petroleum industry must be registered with the federal fire services and for in order to cater for any hazardous or fire outbreak 
in the industry. Maintaining records of petroleum industry operations, particularly on matters that are relating to petroleum reserves, production or export, licenses and leases. They also have the function of advising the government and relevant government agencies on technical matters and public policies that may have impacts on the administration and petroleum activity. Another function is that they process the processing industry applications for leases, licenses, and permits. We move on to another revenue collection agency in Nigeria which is known as NCS, Nigeria Construction Service. The NCS has two core functions, while other functions also work in hand with the two major functions of the NCS. The Nigeria Construction Service are in charge of the collection of government revenue. And what are these government revenue? These include the imports, import duties and excise duties, and also accounting for both import duties and excise duties. What do you understand by import duties? For any importation of goods into the country, which are not contraband by the government of the country. So they, there are fees, there are fines, sorry, there are fees, payments that are charged on all importation of goods. The same is also applicable to goods that will be exported. So excise duties will also be collected on exportation of goods to other countries. So the, the second function of the NCS is to prevent and suppress of smuggling, prevention and suppression of smuggling. So for any contraband goods, it is the function of the NCS to seize such goods and ensure that this type of goods will not be brought into the country or taken out of the country for the benefit of the government of this country. Other functions of the NCS, we have the implementation of government fiscal measures. That is when government sets out a policy on importation and exportation of goods. So they are to ensure implementation of this policy. Generation of statistical data for planning purposes. So they, they give a detailed record of all importation and exportation of goods, detailing individual products that are brought into the country and those that will be taken out, to, out of the country for government to make a a, a, a good and vital planning purposes. They also assist in trade facilitation, implementation of bilateral and multilateral agreements entered into by government. That is agreement between one country and the other country on importation and exportation of goods. Do they carry out this function of implementing this agreement that will have been entered between two countries in order to ensure that smuggling will not be occurring within the borders. Collection of levies and charges. So whenever there are breaches of law, so they are the one in charge to give charges to anyone that breaches the law of the importation and exportation of goods. And part of the charges, which is also part of the import duties and export duties. So they are the one responsible for the collection of these charges. Mind us that these charges or levies will not be collected physically. So this can be collected in form of draft or check on behalf of the government. Or they write a check to anyone that are expected to make this payment and advise them accordingly on the banks to make these payments. Collaborative functions with government agencies, including CBN, police, 
NGLEA, SON, NAVDAC, and FRS, and so on. So they work together with these other agencies in the country in order to ensure strict compliance and also to ensure administration and good remittance of the government's revenue. What is the function of the CBN together with NCS? So it's the CBN that will advise the Nigerian Customs Service on how to remit government revenue properly. Police also to enforce or to assist the NCS when they are finding it, uh, finding any difficulty to bring into book any violators. NDLEA, the Nigerian or National Drugs Law Enforcement Agency, are also working together with the Nigerian Customs Services. We have the SON, Standard Organization of Nigeria, which are in charge of confirming the authenticity and the standard of goods and services or of goods that will be imported or exported. We have the NAVDAC, NAVDAC, National Agency for Food and Drugs Agency, a committee, sorry, commission. So they are in charge of the food and drugs to ensure that all products were being registered and has been approved by the NAVDAC. We, we also have the FRS. So all these agencies work together with the Nigerian Custom Service. Are we following? Yes, sir. All right. Now we move on to the Federation Account Allocation Committee, FAAC. The FAAC are the body, they are part of the government officials that are responsible for the allocation of government revenue to the three tiers of the government. So they are the ones that give revenue formula on the percentage or the rate at which the general sources of government revenue from the federation accounts will be distributed among the three chairs of government. The Federation Accounts Allocation Committee was set up by allocation of revenue, which is known as Federation Accounts Act of 2014. The committee is to deliberate upon and allocate funds from the Federation Accounts to the three chairs of government, which are federal, state, and local government, which is the function of this FAAC to confirm the total revenue from the general pool and the general pool, which is known as the Federation Account, and to give a sharing formula to the three chairs of government, to the federal government, to the state government and to the local government. So the FAAC meeting is normally divided into two sections. We have the technical section and the plenary section. The technical section has the following members. The members of Federation Account Allocation Committee of the technical section include the following. We have the Accountant General of the Federation, which serve as the chairman of the committee. We have the State's Accountant General and representatives of the following agencies. The NNPC, we have a representative as part of the members of the FAAC, the FRS, NCS, DPR, Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission, CBN, NPC, National Planning Commission. We have the Office of State and Local Affairs, Office of the Vice President. We have the Directorate of Military Pension, Office of Head of Service of the Federation, and Department of Civil Pension. So all these committee were to work together as a technical section. 
and what are their functions? What are the functions of this technical committee? The technical section functions include the following. One, to consider the accounting returns of revenue collecting agencies. That is, they ensure all the remittance of government revenue were accurate from the revenue collect collectors. So deliberate and consider the revenue available for distribution. That is what will be the total revenue into the federation account that will be left available to be distributed among the three chairs of government. To make recommendation to the plenary section for the adoption of the revenue to be shared to the three chairs of government. So they will be the one to give recommendation. Having generated a certain amount of revenue from the federation account and also set through some certain amount as cost of collecting this revenue, what will be left will now be sent to the plenary section on the adoption on the sharing formula with, with, between the three chairs of government and to consider any other issues sent from the plenary section. We move on to the members of the plenary section. The members of the plenary section of the Federation Account Allocation Committee include the following. We have the Honorable Minister of Finance. We have State Commissioners of Finance. So the difference between this and that of the technical section. We have the Accountant General that is standing as the chairman. But here we're having the Honorable Minister of Finance. And the technical, we're having the state's Accountant General, Accountant General from each state of the Federation. But here we are going to be having state commissioners of finance. We have the Accountant General of the Federation as also the members of the, of the plenary section. We have the state's Accountant General, representative of the 13 organizations mentioned under the membership of the technical section. Who are the 13 representatives? So the 13 representatives include the NNPC, FRS, NCS, DPR, CBN, NPL, Office of the State and Local Affairs, of the Office of the Vice President, up to the Department of Civil Pension. All these members will also form part of the plenary section. And lastly, the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Finance or such officer as may be designated by the said minister shall be the secretary to the committee. Now these are the members of the technical, sorry, of the plenary committee. What are the functions of the plenary committee? To ensure that allocation made to the states from the federation account are promptly and fully paid into the treasury of each component as it is being prescribed by law. So they are the ones to ensure that all the revenue that is shared from the federation account to the state's government is promptly paid fully into the treasury of each component of the state as it has been prescribed by the law and to submit annual reports of its performance or activities to the national assembly we move on to the sjlgaac state joint local government account allocation committee the committee was set up to ensure equitable distribution of the statutory allocations to local government from the federation account and 10 percent of the igr internally generated revenue of the appropriate state government are shared to the local government in the states. So the state joins local government account 
Transport Allocation Committee, which receives revenue from the federation account, also ensure that 10% of revenue that are generated internally within a state will be shared among all the local governments in the state. In accordance with the 1999 constitution, using stipulated criteria, which include equality, population, primary school enrollment, and IGR. So this is the basis at which the 10% of the IGR in the state will be distributed to all the local government in the state in accordance with the equality that is all there are percentage on how to share this based on the equality that is all the local government in the state we have equal percentage based on population from each of the local government based on the primary school enrollment and also based on the internally generated revenue what are the composition of the state Joint Local Government Account Allocation Committee. We have the commissioner charged with responsibility for local government in the state to be the chairman. And the chairman of each local government council in the state. We have the two representatives of the Accountant General of the Federation, a representative of the accountant general of the state, two persons to be appointed by the governor of the state, and lastly, the permanent secretary of the state's ministry. What are the functions of, of the SJL GAAC, State Joint Local Government Account Allocation Committee? Allocations made. So the local government councils in the state from the federation accounts and from the state concern are promptly paid into the state joint local government accounts to so ensure compliance with promptly remittance of allocation received from the federation accounts and also received from the state account to be distributed to all the local government that are in the state. Distributed to the local government councils in accordance with the provisions of any law made in that behalf by the, by the House of Assembly of the states. Are we following? Yes, sir. All right. We have the revenue mobilization, allocation, and fiscal commission, Ramafak. The Ramafak was established in 1989 with the composition that the commission shall consist of a chairman and one member from each state of the federation and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Abuja, who are persons of unquestionable integrity with requisite qualifications and experience to be appointed by the president. So he's going to have a chairman and a representative, a member from each state of the Federation and FCT. What are the powers of Ramafak? They are to monitor the accruals to and disbursement of revenue from the federation accounts. They review from time to time the revenue allocation formula and principles in operation to ensure conformity with changing realities. They also give an advice to the federal, state, and local governments on fiscal efficiency and methods by which their revenue is to be increased. So they give advice to the federal government, state, and the local governments. So it's a function of the Aramafak. So they give a clue 
on how to increase revenue within the federation or to the state government or to the local government advice usually raised by the ram of pack so and this is part of the reason why consumption tax usually increase value added tax withholding tax and we also have uh, the pay so it is a function of this ram of pack that give an advice to the government at each level of the federation they determine the remuneration appropriate to the orders of the offices as specified in the act that the one that collates and give advice on the remuneration that is appropriate to all public officers including the president now we move on to the classification of government revenue i hope we are still together yes sir yes sir all right the classes of government revenue is divided into two we have two classes the first class which is the federation account and the second class here is the consolidated revenue fund account how we do Are we there? We are yes. here, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I said we're having two classes. The first class is what? Federation account. And the second class is consolidated revenue, revenue fund, fund account. And the first class is having a one to three, while the second class is having a six to a 17. First class is having a one to a three, and second class is having a six to a seventeen. The federation, the federal government derives its revenue from different sources. The federal government revenue are kept in the consolidated revenue fund before the 1989 budget, and the federal government revenue sources were classified into the following heads. We have a one to at 17 at one to at three belong to the federation account why at six to at 17 belongs to the consolidated revenue fund account at one is direct tax at two indirect tax at three we have the mining at six is direct allocation seven is direct tax six eight licenses and land revenue we have mining at nine, that is solid minerals. We have at 10, trees. At 11, earnings and sales. At 12, we have the rent of government property. At 13, that is interest and repayment, general. We have at 14, interest and repayment, state government. We have at 15, reimbursement. At 16 is armed forces, and at 17 is miscellaneous. We move on two classes first class is federation that is at one to three and the second class is what at six to at 17 that is consolidated revenue fund account the federation account which is at one to at three is the general pool or we call it general sources of government revenue that is the account that belong to all the federation is what is known as federation accounts. When we said something belongs to all the federation, it doesn't belong to the states, doesn't belong to the local government, and doesn't belong to the federal government, but it belongs to all the government, which include the federal government, the state government, and the local government. Are we following? Yes, sir. All right. The 1989 budget classified the federal government revenue sources into two groups. We have the federation account revenue X, and we have the 
federal government account revenue aid. But the 1989 classification was modified in 1994 fiscal year as follows. We have the Federation Account Revenue Act. We have the Value Added Tax and the Federal Government Account Revenue Act. The Federal Government Account Revenue Act is what is regarded as the Consolidated Revenue Fund Account. We understand it better. Let us move on. Don't forget that we have it two. I said we're having two class. The first class is what? Federation account, which is having at what? At one, two, at three. While the second class is CFR, CRF, Consolidated Revenue Fund account. And that is having at six to what? At six to at 17. The Federation account revenue is. The Federation account was the established by section 162 of the 1999 constitution of the federal republic of nigeria the federation account is one into which is paid please underline all revenue collected by the government of the federation can you underline that as i just explained earlier that the federation account is the general pool of government revenue. So this is further explanation on it that the federation account is one, it is the account into which is paid all revenue collected by government of the federation. And this type of revenue that is collected by the government for the federation are at one, at two, and and this at one, at two, and at three class types accept the following collections into the federation account. It exempts the following collection into the federation account. And what are the exemptions? Proceed from the PE of personnel of the armed forces of the federation, the Nigerian police force foreign service officers and residents of the federal capital territory, Abuja. Are we following? Yes, sir. Okay. Are we following? Yes, sir, we are. Okay. notes under the federation account we have 13 percent of revenue derived from oil sources which will goes to the states from which it is being obtained and this is called 13 percent derivation we give 13 percent of revenue that will be sources from oil oil country oil states and this obtainers we go to the state in which the oil will be sourced from and it's in the consonance with the principle of derivation. We have 11% cost of collection, which will be subdivided into 7% and 4%. 7% and 4% of the gross revenue in the federation account are allocated to the custom service that is, custom service have seven percent cost of collection, while the FIRS we have four percent cost of collection. The rates stated above are first line charges. That is, thirteen percent derivation sources is adjusted. That is, it will be deducted in the oil sector revenue received from the total oil proceeds. Why 7% and 4% of other revenue receipts are taken out of the non-oil collections. Whatever remains in the federation account will be distributable pool. Account distributable pool will be shared between the three tiers of government. So this note is just giving an insight on 
what will be the sharing formula? That is what will be the balance that will be shared between the three chairs of government from the federation account. Now let's take a look at the revenue X under the federation account and the revenue X under the complete revenue fund account, CRM. We have a one to three, which is for the federation account revenue. These are Ed one, Ed two, and Ed three. Ed one is direct tax. What are the types of taxation that are regarded as direct taxation? These are payable by individuals and friends, such as we have the company income tax, we have the petroleum profit tax, we have the capital gain tax, and we have the personal income tax of foreigners residing in Nigeria. These are direct taxes. We have a two indirect taxes. These are taxes raised from goods and services in the form of custom and excise duties for future penalties, valued added tax, VAT, and so on, ETC. And three, we have mining. Mining, these are oil pipeline license fees, rent of mining rights, mining fees, royalties on minerals, NNPC earnings from direct sales, penalties for, glass, for gas fledge and rent on oil well. Ido John, your question. Okay, sir, so in the under the aid one, we have a um, direct tax of which a personal income tax of the foreigner residing in Nigeria is uh, uh, included. Now, my question is this. E, um, that is a personal income tax of foreigners residing in Nigeria. They are like expatriates, right? Yes. The, 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 uh, the, 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 the pay of expatriates, are they not remitted to the state government? Pay of I'm with you. Yeah, pay of that is personal income tax of expatriates. I think they are remitted to state government. Am I am I right? No. Okay, so that means pay of uh, expatriates should be remitted to federal government. Yes. That, that is FRS, right? Yes. I heard. Thank you, FRS. As was stated earlier on, that the state government. That is the SBRRS, also form part of the Revenue Collection Agency to ensure compliance by the revenue, uh, by, by the payers. And part of their function is to ensure that the appropriateness collection will be collected and remitted upon, accordingly to the right authority. And we're having this FRS in all the states of the Federation. So the collection can be done by the states and the remittance will be to the Federation. Is that clear? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's clear, sir. It's clear. All right. Okay. Now, at three, please, we're having at three and at eight that looks alike. Let me go back to. Let me go back to the full S. Ed three is mining. And we also have Ed nine, which is also mining. But if you check at Ed nine, it was quoted to be the solid minerals. But Ed three, Ed three collection relates to oil revenue, oil and gas revenue, while Ed nine relates to other, other natural resources, which are solid minerals. So please don't let us misquote at three and at nine. So at one to at three, these are the revenue that belongs to the Federation accounts. And this is the general pool of the government. So 
we source this egg one, egg two, and egg three revenue. So the notes under this federation account before the balance will be shared among the three chairs of government state that 13% of revenue that will be derived from oil sources. And what are the oil sources revenue? These are a three, which relates to all oil sources, 13% of which will be deducted and as a form of collection, consonance with a uh, principle of derivation, which will go to the state from which the oil were being obtained. So that will serve as what? Expenditure on the exploration, the refinery, and the distribution of the oil, oil products. We have 7% cost of collection to the custom services, which relates to the indirect tax, the taxation that are relating to consumption of goods and services. And this will be given 7% of this collection by the custom service. We form part of the expenditure in form of the cost that will be used in generating this type of revenue. And we have 4% that will be going to the FIRS, which relates to Ed1 collections. And this 4% will also serve as the cost, which is the expenditure that will be incurred for the FRS to generate these sources of revenue. Having deducted the 30% revenue and uh, derivatives, 7% cost of collection and 4% cost of collection, the leftover, whatever remains in the Federation account will now be distributable pool between the three chairs of government, the federal, state, and the local government. Are we following? Are we there? Yeah, you too, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, I didn't get what you said last. Like you said, when it remains from the federation account, is distributed um between the state and local government. No, it will be distributed between federal, state, and local government. Okay, I thought the federation account was the federal government. No, the federation okay. account is the general pool for all the federation. So the federal government will also have share in that federation account. Okay. Is that clear? Okay, so where does this federation account go to exactly? There won't be any leftover in the federation account. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. We said this federation account is the general, that is, this is the general source, that is all the revenue that is coming to this federation account does not belong to one government. It belongs to all the governments. We are having okay. three levels of government. We are having federal, state, and local government. So the word federation account relates to the account that belongs to all the governments in the country which are federal government, state government, and local government. So what, what are the revenue that we collected into the federation account? The, the direct tax, the, the indirect tax, and mining. Are you there? And the types of these heads these were split in this slide. As the directors, we have the capital gain tax, petroleum profit tax, the personal income tax, uh, sorry, the company income tax. We have the indirect tax, which is on goods and services, first term duties, extra duties, for future penalties, VAT. We have mining, which relates to all oil revenues. So having determined the Ed1, Ed2, Ed3 revenue, which is coming to the Federation account. So this Federation account is now telling us that all this revenue does not belong to one government. It belongs to the three governments in the Federation. So the expenditure that the government will be making from these sources of revenue include the 13% derivatives, 7% cost of collection, and 
spent cost of collection. So having deducted all this from all the revenue, the amount that will be left over will now be distributed among the three chairs of government, which are the federal government, the state government, and the local government. Now, that is now what will now lead us to the Consolidated Revenue Fund account, CF, CRF. What is that CRF? The CRF is the federal government account. Are you there? Yes, I got you. Thank you. You're welcome. So the CRF is what is known as the federal government account, or it is known as consolidated revenue fund account. So we all know this account to be CRF, but it is also the same thing as the federal government account. So the federal government has their own account that they operate separately, different from the federation account, because the federation account belongs to all the government, not a single chair of government. So now what do we understand by CRF, the federal government account, CRF. The CRF was established by section 80 of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended 1999 constitution, except those revenue items which are specifically designated to other funds. All others shall be paid into the consolidated revenue fund account. The various sources of income credited to CRF as well as charges due to are as follows. Don't forget, I said we're having two classes of revenue. The first one is what? Federation. Why the second one is CRF? Federation is having at one to three. Why CRF is having at what? Six to 17. Now the CRF, which is the federal government account, analysis of the various sources of revenue payable to CRF include the following. We have at six. What is at six? Direct allocation from the federation account at the prevailing rate. What is the direct allocation? from the federation account. Can you see? FCC states that this is a direct allocation. What does this direct allocation mean? It means that the direct distribution that the federal government we have from where? From the federation account. That is what is known as FCC in the federal government account, which is also known as consolidated revenue fund account. I believe you all understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is there a particular percentage for federal for federal government from this federation yes. account? Yes, there is percentage. For there's percentage for federal government, there's percentage for state government, and there's also percentage for the local government. And this will have been stated and quoted by the FAAC, Federation Account Allocation Committee. And we've talked about the two sections. We have the plenary and we have the technical section. So they are the one in charge of giving rates to the three chairs of government on how to share, distribute the money from the Federation account. It is not fixed. So when there are changes, so this policy, they will give you the rate to use for federal government, rate to use for state government, and rate to use for local government. And also for exam condition, examiner will not ask us to go and use our brain to bring out this rate. The rate will be given to us specifically on how to distribute between the three tiers of government. At seven, direct taxes. Don't forget, under the federation account, federation account also has its own direct tax. So direct tax under the consolidated revenue fund account includes we have the pay of armed forces and police personnel, foreign service officers, and residents of, of 
the federal capital territory, Abuja. This will, will become direct access to the federation, to the federal government account. Noting that these types of accounts were excluded from where? From the federation account, but it is sources of revenue to the federal government because all these personnel were workers to the federal government, which is the consolidated revenue fund account is going to into the revenue consolidated revenue fund account. We have an eight license and internal revenue. These are realized from the issues of licenses, e.g., we have arms and ammunition license fees, we have goldsmith license fees, radio and TV license fees, gold dealers license fees, all these form part of an eight sources of revenue under the consolidated revenue bond account. We have at nine, which is mining. And what type of mining is this? We talk about the solid minerals. This includes mining fuels, rent of crown lands, royalties on gold, tin, iron ore, and coal mines. At 10, these are fees. Your question, Ido John. Okay, sir, sorry for drawing the class back. When you were explaining the uh, the category of, I think, funds that goes into the federation account, you made mention of direct tax, indirect tax, and uh, mining. Now, now, you said under direct tax, I think you mentioned capital gain tax. Am I right? Yes. Okay, then the capital gain tax, I think, so capital gain tax, so some capital gain tax are collected by federal government, right? And some are uh, collected by the state government. Yes. Am, I right? Am I right? So yes. which, which of these two goes into the federation account? Okay. So is it like, is it all that goes into the federation account? No, it is not all that goes into the federation account. We have those that go to the states and we have those that go to the federal government. Oh, the okay. taxation, hold on, please. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you, sir. All right. We have PLC and we have LTG. Are you there? Yes, sir. I'm with you, sir. Any company with PLC, the collections are going to the federation. Why that of LTD collections are going to the state government? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so that means, okay, now you said some will go to a uh, federation account, why some will go to state, uh, state account, right? State government yes. account. Yes, yes. One of them into federation account, by the time, I think you said FAAC, by the time they determine the sharing formula, right? That means yes. part of what is in federation account will still go to state. So which will still be as if, like um like uh, which you see be as if part of the taxes that they have you know the like um like that the capital gain tax part of it like, um, they collected part of it that is the one that relates to ltd now they are still collecting the one that relates to plc again by getting some shares in a federation account so why 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 would it be like that i i don't know whether you are whether you get my question okay i understand your point uh, we have the 1999 constitutions, which gives rooms for tax collection. And any of these forms of collection that were not released to the state government should not be part of cost of collection revenue to state or local government. And state government also has their own constitution which will be submitted to the national to their state assembly and finally which will be submitted to the state governor to give assent and part of this anyone that are not being released or given priority given functions by the federal government to this from the federal government which is from the constitution to the state government because the state government were also given rooms 
to have their state laws on collections. And the general pool, looking at the general pool, it doesn't belong to only federal government. It doesn't belong to the state government. It belongs to who? It belongs to all the federation. Now, there are some revenue that are coming into the federal government, which the state government or the local government does not have any ability to collect this type of revenue. And these are the top five parts of revenue that are classified from H6 to H17. Are you there? So you are looking at it that the state governments are having two sources of revenue. Yes, exactly. That is, the, the, they are having shares from the federation account, and they also have shares from the state account. Account, yes. So it is not double. It's not double. Okay, okay sir. All right, thank you, sir. It is, it, is, it is based on the constitution, and this constitution has looked at what are the means and what will be the benefits. That's why there are some privilege that will be given to the federal. There are some privilege that will be given to the state. Why there will be some privilege that will be to the local. Now let me now come to uh, the same the same point here. Looking at at nine mining, mining which is relating to solid minerals that is natural resources aside from oil sources, oil revenue. We have gold. We have iron oil. We have coal mines, and this can be extracted from any state in the Federation. And once this type of solid minerals were being discovered and being explored from any state, the state doesn't have any rights on collection for such revenue. So are we going to say federal government are also having multiple collections? So these are the reason why the constitution has stated separately the revenue that will be belonging to the federal government, those that will be going to state government, and those that will be going to the local government. Is that clear, please? Yes, I do, sir. All right. At 10, we have fees. Fees are received on services rendered by government officials. And we mentioned part of this. We have court fees, court fines, and medical fees. So all these type of fees are part of sources of revenue to the federal government. We have at 11, earnings and sales. Earnings and sales are derived from the use and subsequent disposal of government property. Example include sales of stores, publications and stamps, commission on money order, and poundage on poster orders. We have at 12, rent of government property. So the incomes include rent on government quarters, land and buildings. So the state government can rent the government quarters. Federal government and local government can rent the government quarters. Individual or private sector can also rent the government properties for their use. So any of these rents, the revenue that will be allocated or that will be received will be going to the federal government accounts. And we have a 13 interest and repayment general. These are interest and repayment of loans granted to individuals by the government, corporations, and government companies. An example is, is the repayment of motor vehicle loans. And 14, interest and repayment states. These are interest and repayment of loans granted to the state government. So federal government can, can grant a loan to any state government and the repayment will be recognized under a 14. We have armed forces. So the sales of armed forces properties such as 
old vehicles and store will constitute revenue under Ed 15. We have Ed 16 reimbursements. These are reforms for services rendered to the state and local government councils, public corporation, and other statutory bodies by the federal government officers. An example of this type of reimbursement of audit fees and refunds of overpayments made to government workers. So most of the time, federal government can render an assistance to the state government or local government by executing state government projects or local government projects, which will be expected to be repaid by the affected state or local government when our funds are available. So the type of refunds are also constituting part of revenue to the government, which will be recognized under age 16. We have age 17, miscellaneous. These are other sources of revenue apart from those stated above. Example are overpayment refunded, last deposit, and any other revenue that the state joint tax board, sorry, the JT joint tax board, JTB, found to be part of revenue that will be coming to the federation, to the federal government account, will also be remit, uh, remitted into the miscellaneous revenue, which is recognized under S17. Having recognized revenue that will be coming to the federal government account, which is CRF. Let us take a look at the charges, that is expenditure to the Consolidated Revenue Fund account. The charges to the Consolidated Revenue Fund include the following. One, we have all recurrent expenditure heirs in the approved estimates. Example are personnel costs, we pay wages and salaries, overhead costs, and servicing of national debts. So these are recur recurrent in nature, that is, they are usually reoccurring. So we can't do without this reoccurring expenditure. Salary must be paid, overhead costs for running government activities and also services or servicing of national debt all form part of the recurrent expenditure. Salary and consolidated revenue allowances of statutory officers. We have the pension and gratuities. So all these are charges to the consolidated revenue fund accounts, CRF. Now we move on to the value added tax, but but which constitute part of revenue under the federation account. What is the tax imposed on value which the supplier or seller of goods or services add to the good or services before selling it? The introduction of VAT was necessitated by the need to boost the revenue of the government from from non-oil sources following the fluctuations in oil revenue due to gloss in the international market. What was introduced in the year 1994 fiscal year at the rate of 5% and is being administered by FRS. The net amount is divided into the following. Please, we need to update this. What is the current VAT rate? 7.5 percentage. Please, we need to update that. The current VAT rate is 7.5 percent, and the implementation has commenced since the 2000 and I think 2020 Finance Act. We have 7.5 percentage now, and the net amount will now be divided into three shares of government. 
the federal government will be having 15 percent state government will be having 35 percent and local government will be having 50 percentage and on this part some states were having district discrepancies as regards to the bat collection looking at the derivation most of these bats were being derived individually by state government and looking at the rate at which these bats were being generated by each state to the frs so the share to the state government we are now being looking into that the, the, the state government is supposed to have the highest share of the value added tax. And I think that will have been part of what, what the state joint board tax and state board and joint tax board, GTB, we are still looking at on the sharing formula. And I think this uh, in the past months, I think last year or this current year, the river state governments were having uh, this same issue with the federal government on bad collection. Development fund. Development fund. The existence of the development fund was solidified by the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Although created earlier by section 25 of the Finance Act, Control and Management Act of 1958. The fund is established for the purpose of capital development projects. And the sources of money according to the development fund could be in four ways. From the name development fund accounts, they are being created for development purposes and the sources of revenue under the development fund account include the following. We have four sources. Contribution from the consolidated revenue fund account, which is the federal government that basically funds the development fund account. These are yearly transfer of money from the consolidated revenue fund in the federal government's wisdom, notwithstanding that the constitution does not expressly stated this. External grants. These are usually received from foreign countries and non-financial institutions like the International Monetary Fund. And that is also part of the external loans that will be generated into the development fund account. So this may come from such foreign bodies as the International Monetary Fund, IMF. We have the internal loans. These are loans raised and retired within the country. Long-term long -term loans raised through development stock or short-term loans through treasury certificate, which have a lifespan of two years and treasury bills, which mature in 91 days. These are the four basic sources of revenue into the development fund account, which are being created for capital development purposes. What are the charges from the development fund account? The charges from development fund may also be categorized into four. The first one, summary of capital expenditure payment. Development fund account is created for the purpose of capital development. A um, major source, a major expenditure will also be a summary of capital expenditure payments. This is expenditure incurred for the provision and maintenance of infrastructural amenities, such as construction of bridges and dams. We have general administration. These are expenditure items made from the provision and maintenance of army barracks, police stations, staff houses, motor vehicles, and hospitals. 
We have external financial obligations and they are disbursements made for expenditure in care to provide financial assistance to countries which are in need as the government are also receiving from external grants, same as the expenditure from the development fund accounts to the countries that are in need of assistance. So the relief may be in form of donations, grants and aids to neighboring countries. And the fourth one, loans made to state governments in Nigeria. These are different types of loans which the federal government grants to states for developmental purposes. And lastly, we have the contingency fund account. The contingency fund, as the name implies, has its legality under section 81 of 1979 and 1989 constitutions and section 83 of the 1999 constitution. The fund is set up to meet unforeseen expenditure, urgent situations occasioned by such as natural disasters, the contingency fund derives its income from the Consolidated Revenue Fund, that is, the federal government also fund the contingency fund account. So it is majorly meant for occasional unforeseen circumstances like war, natural disasters, or disease outbreak. What are the charges on this contingency fund account? A charge will arise on contingency grounds when the need arises. In exceptional cases where environment is not possible, that is, fund is not possible to move from one head of account to another head of account. And where an application for additional provision reveals that the issue of funding cannot be delayed without causing serious injury, like case of the internal, internally displaced person, IDP camp to public interest. So the need cannot wait till a supplementary appropriation act is passed because this will not this might not have been budgeted for in the annual estimate. Are we together please? Yes sir. Okay. Yes sir. All right. Now let's just work one practice question and we have two other questions that we can leave our hands on as assignments. I hope we are with our writing materials. Please don't forget your sources of government revenue. Ed one to Ed three, Ed six to Ed seventeen. If you can remember this, Ed one to Ed seventeen, you won't have any problem in computation of or preparation of federation accounts. Consolidated revenue fund accounts, fund accounts, development fund accounts. Don't forget that Edward belongs to who? Federation account. Six to 17 belongs to the Consolidated Revenue Fund accounts. Are we there? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, we can sir. hear you. Yes, we can, we can hear, hear you. you. Yeah, I can hear yes, you. Yes, sir. We can hear you. I can hear you, sir. I can hear you. Okay. All right, let's continue. 
what is the requirement here? We we are required to prepare the federation accounts for supplementary revenue fund accounts and development fund accounts. Let me open the Excel that we'll be using. To transmit. So now let us identify all, all the provided information before utilizing them into our solution booklet. The following information was submitted by the sub accounting officer of the Federal Ministry of Finance for the year ended at 1st December 2014. Please, I will need you to tell me or to tell us the categories of revenue and where to identify them. To tell us if it is federation account, consolidated revenue fund account, or development fund account. Is it an inflow or outflow? Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Import duties. Inflow, import duty is inflow. And an import duty should be a form of tax. So it should, it, it should go to a federation account. I did not, I'm not convinced with your explanation. You said it's supposed to be a form of tax. The consultant revenue fund account also has taxation too. Uh, it, 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 uh, that should be an, an indirect tax, uh, if I'm right. Yes, import duty. Indirect tax. Right. Indirect tax. Consolidated revenue fund account is also having indirect tax. Okay, this is what inflow into what the federation account because this is uh, identified. Under what? Add two of the federation account. Are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Re revenue federation account. So you tell us revenue federation account or revenue consolidated revenue fund account or revenue development fund account. If it is a uh, expenditure, you tell us an outflow into any of those accounts. Import duties. Revenue production accounts. All right. Interest and repayments. General. Federation accounts. Federation. No, it will be federation accounts. Uh, uh, consolidated. Revenue account. Some say ah. federation, no, inflow, some say CRF. Inflow, CRF. Inflow, CRF. So which one are we following? Inflow into CRF, sir. So which head are we having interest and repayment? That is like a thirteen. Federation. Uh, please let us get this clearly. It, it seems some of us are still not getting this. Let us get it clearly before we leave. We have two class of we have two two classes of uh, revenue. We have the federation and we have the consolidated revenue fund. The federation is having three heads. The federation is having three heads: head one, two, and three. All the revenue relating to Ed one, two, three are going into the 
federation account. Please let us just go back to that now so that we see it again before we move. We need, we need to have an understanding of this because if you don't get that clearly, it will affect our input. Please let us study that very well again. Ed one to three relates to who? Relates to the federation account. And what are the types of revenue that we are expecting under Ed one, two, and three? We have direct tax, which include the following company income tax, petroleum profit tax, capital gain tax, back duty assessment, personal income tax, foreigners res residing in Nigeria. Indirect tax, we have what? Custom duties, excise duties, forfeiture penalties, value added tax. We have a three, mining, which include mining rights, like oil pipeline license fees, any revenue that are relating to oil, any revenue that are relating to oil are classified under eight three, which is mining. These three eights are for the federation accounts. Why we have eight six to eight seventeen, which are majorly for consolidated revenue fund accounts. And what are the types? We have eight six. Eight six is the allocation from the federation accounts. Eight seven are direct tax, which include pays of armed forces, any armed forces police personnel, foreign service officers, and residents of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. These are direct taxes to the federal government account, which is known as CRF. We have at eight, license and internal revenue. These are realized from issue of licenses. Examples are, we have arms and ammunition license fees, goldsmith license fee, radio and tv license fees gold dealers license fees at nine we have mining which are solid minerals this include mining fees rent of crown lands royalties on gold tin iron ore and coal mines at 10 we have fees these are fees received on services rendered by, by government officials. And examples are court fees, court fines, and medical fees. At 11, we have earnings and sales. Earnings and sales are derived from the use of subsequent disposal of government property. Examples are sales of stores, publications and stamps, Commission on money order and poundage on poster orders. We have at 12 rents of government properties. So the income include rents on government quarters, land, and buildings. We have interest and repayments. General, these are interest and repayment of loans granted to individuals by the government. Let me go back to rent of government property. Example of these government properties, aside from government quarters, we can use, um, uh, what is it called? Okay, we have the, um, uh, what we, we can have museum, we can have uh, stadium, we can have stadium, and we can also have center like the, okay, we have TBS as we have in the, the 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 Teslim Balogun Square, I think Tapawa Balewa Square, as we're having both in Lagos and in Abuja. So all these are also part of government properties that will be rented to individuals or entities that want to make use of it. We have interest and repayment general at 13. And these are interest repayment of loans granted to individuals by government, corporations, and government companies. An example is the repayment of motor vehicle loans. That's at 13. General, we have interest and repayment states, and these are interest and repayment of loans 
granted to the state government. At 15, armed forces, and this includes the sales of armed forces property, such as old vehicles and stores. At 16, reimbursement, and these are usually a refund from state and local government to the federal government based on services that will have been rendered by the federal government to state and local government. And at 17, miscellaneous, these are all other sources of revenue that belongs to the federal government. And the examples of this revenue include overpayments, refunded, lapse deposit. So if you can understand at one to at 17, preparation of your consolidated revenue fund account, federation account, contingency fund account, development fund account should not be any problem. Can we move on now? Let's Hello. Move on, sir. We can move on. We can move on, sir. All right. Yes, now, we can move on. Let us import duty. Federation account. Federation. Under head two. If they get the federation account from head two. Federation. Okay. Import duties. Same thing, right? Revenue, inflow, federation account, interest and repayments, general. CRF. Revenue to CRF. All right. Interest and repayment, states. CRF. CRF. fourteen. Hold dealer's license fees. CRF. Is it compulsory we um for example purpose it compulsory we state the eight? No, you don't need that. Oh, okay. Just for the class. Yes. Oh, okay. Gold dealer's license fee. CRF. Yeah. Only tell me Ed, CRF. Only tell me is it revenue? Is it revenue or expenditure? Revenue. <laughs> okay. Somebody background. Somebody's Somebody background is echoing. It's distracting us. Arms and ammunition license fees. CRF at at sixteen. I don't need the S. Just tell me revenue or expenditure. CRF revenue. or federation yeah. account. Revenue. CRF. CRF. Are you sure? Uh, it's government that it's government that plays tariffs on. Products. Okay, what's the purpose of tariff? tariff. Hold on. What's the purpose of tariff? I think tariff is like a form of VAT. So it's like it's placed on a particular product. I, I don't know. I think that's what tariff is. It's like a percentage base I placed on particular product. Mm. Tariff, tariff, tariff is a form of tax. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a form of, and uh, I think it should go to uh, a tariff should be a tax on maybe importation or so. Thank so you. It should, tariff should is on importation or exportation. Mr. Ido, I think the, the distraction is from your background. It, uh, okay, please, anytime you want to talk, you can unmute. Then you remit back. Tariffs are placed on importation or exportation of goods. And the purpose of this tariff is to decline or to, to reduce, uh, sorry, it is for, it's for the government to place embargo on goods, on a specific goods. And part of the reason is that 
in order to make local goods and uh, local consumption to be increasing. So that is why government usually place rates on some goods at which if these tariffs were being paid by that group, before you get the goods, you are going to pay a huge amount on it. And the cost compared to your locally produced products will be so high at which it will discourage the importation. Are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Tariffs are charges on imported goods. These are charges on imported goods. In order to discourage foreign consumption, for locally products to be consumed. That's the purpose of tariffs, is to discourage importation. So the rates that will be put on these tariffs will be so high, so for the importation to be discouraged. So who are those that are in charge of importation and exportation of goods? NCS. NCS. And NCS made collection for who? Government. What type of government? Federation. So if you go to Federation, and this, all right. So this is going to Federation. Revenue or expenditure? Revenue. Expense. Revenue. 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 It's a revenue. Do you get that? We have excise duties. Excise duties. Oil pipeline license fees. Cigarette. I think that's to do with oil. Mining. It has to do with mining. We have two mining. We have mining. That's federation. It should be. It should right. to do. It's mining. So it yes, we're having two types of mining. Please just note this. Take note of this. Any revenue that are belonging to oil, oil and gas, take them to federation accounts. These are mining F3. Mining in F3 belongs to oil revenue. Oil, any oil revenue they are mining under a three. So this is federation accounts revenue. Are we there? Yes, sir. But it's a license fee. So I don't know. Yes, it's a fee for anyone that wants to go into oil sector. Registration or getting a license, you have to make a payment to the government for you to have a license. So is it not sources of revenue to the government? Yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. So anything that is relating to oil, either license, registration, um, any payments relating to it, these are revenue to the government. Treasury bills issued. Revenue CRS. Treasury bills repaid. Expenditure CRS. Registration and license fees. Registration and license fees. Registration and license fees. Federation. CRS. It should be CRS. CRF. 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 Sales of crude oil for export. Federation. Federation. Sales of crude oil for domestic. Federation. Armed Forces Educational Receipts. Uh, 
right. Reimbursement. CRF income. Miscellaneous income. CRF. Revenue. CRF. Rent of oil well. Hydration. Rent of oil ground. Hydration. Federation. Royalties for extraction of oil. Federation. So charge on pioneer companies. The charge on pioneer companies. Yeah. Federation. 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 Who are pioneer companies? <laughs> Is it not foreign companies? And any even any income that is relating to companies who are in charge of the collection. So federal government. Federal it, government. It's federal government. So federation. 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 But who 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 who, who are the collection agency? FRS. Um, FRS. 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 All right, thank you. Pay of armed forces personnel. CRF. Pay of police CRF. personnel. CRF. CRF. Police of foreign service officers. Federation accounts. Federation. Pay of foreign service officers. CRF. 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 And pay of residents of the federal. Capital territory. All right. Other pay. CRF. Okay. Rent of government properties. CRF. Sales of boarded vehicles. CRF. CRF. Yes. Is other? Did you say other pay? CRF. Yes. Wait, other other payee? Yeah. Wait, what I, do you mention? Who who mentioned CRF on that on that other payee? Because I not don't. <laughs> so there's an amount attached to that payee. Other payee is not CRF. Oh. Okay. But who mentioned who mentioned CRF? I was the one. <laughs> okay. All right. So it is federation for that PE. Okay. Aside okay. from PE, see PE of armed forces, police personnel, foreign service officer, residents of the FCT. They are for consolidated revenue fund accounts. Are we there? Yes, sir. All right. Rent of government properties. CRF. CRF. Rent of boarded vehicles. CRF. CRF. Sales. Sorry, sales of boarded vehicles. CRF. 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 Petroleum profit tax. Federation account. Companies income tax. Federation account. capital receipts. Development fund account. Development okay. fund account. Yes, development because this fund is account. Capital in nature. All that capital is. You know, we also mentioned this when we are looking at the revenue that are coming into the development fund account. We move on. Transfer to development fund. And development fund. That's direct allocation. Usually transfer to development fund account. CRF. CRF. So this account will affect two legs. It will affect the CRF. CRF. It, it, is, it will be an outflow under the CRF <coughs> and it will become inflow to who? To development fund <coughs> account. All right. Transfer to contingencies fund. CRF yeah. and contingencies. CRF and contingencies. All right. 
Recurrent expenditure. CRF. Expense. Yeah. Outflow for CRF. CRF. Expense. All right. B. Salaries and allowances of statutory officers. CRF. Expense. CRF. CRF. Expense. CRF. Yeah. PHCN capital expenditure on dams. CRF. Oh, no, no, no. Developments. No. Developments. Deve developments. Developments. Inflow or outflow? It's the development fund. Outflow. And outflow. 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 Expenditure. Capital expenditure. All right. On dams. All right. The expenditure on dams. Yes. Okay. So now I'm having confidence in you all. So just go into the examination. Come on, give me uh, 90% of. <laughs> Revenue allocation formula is given as follows 13% of oil proceeds as derivation, 11%, 7%, and 4% of customs and FIRS to the free cost of collection. The balance is to be shared by the three tiers of government as follows Federal government, 52.68%. State government, 26.72%. Local government, 20.60%. You are required to prepare a federation account, consulting revenue fund accounts and development fund accounts. So don't let us take much of our time. Since we have analyzed where each of these accounts are going, so let us just prepare the account oh, as it is being required. Okay, can we leave it to us to use that one as part of the practice question? Let's leave it to us. No, I think it's it. Solve it. All right. Let us solve. Okay. Please always take note of the name of ministries, departments, or agencies that you are preparing their accounts. The date or year at which the account is being created and always quote your values. If the examiner give you in millions or billions or thousands, please always state all this information. They are necessary because they also award their marks. So which ministry, Federal Ministry of Finance? Yes, sir. We have Federal Ministry of Finance. Please, can you see my screen? Yes. We are told to prepare what? Federation account. Is it for the month or for the year? For it should be for the year. 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 Twenty thirteen or fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Okay. Now we pick the information. Okay, three accounts we're required to prepare. Can we just yes. solve them simultaneously so that we just be picking the one that is going to Federation Consolidated and Development Fund accounts? Let us prepare simultaneously. We have the Federation Consolidated. Is the Federation that even take much? information consolidated sir please we will be preparing contingency accounts because i can see transfer to contingencies fund today uh, one or two things number one examiner do they require us to do that okay 
That is one. No, the, another no, thing they about another thing do. about that another thing about that contingency is that it is affecting one leg of account. Okay. Are you there? Yes, sir. But yes. ordinarily, yes, sir. it's supposed to affect two legs. It is an outflow from authority yes, revenue fund account. Why it should be an inflow to, to, to the contingency fund account. Yes, sir. Do you get that? But since yes, Ezekuna did not ask us to prepare that, yes. do we need to show more skills? Yes, <laughs> But if you have time, after completing the whole computation, you can just go and open the accounts that you have in inflow from where? From the from CRF, CRF account. Thank you, sir. All Thank right, you, sir. Consolidated revenue. Then we can have the development fund accounts here. All right. So this in thousands naira, right? We buy notebook, Jim. I was talking about commanding notebook. No, our third blessing, automatic and print. Queen, queen. You are distracting. Okay, now let's start speaking the information. Exports, imports. 1690. This one they are going to wear federation, right? Federation accounts, yeah. As export revenue. Imports are 90. Sixty and ninety interest and repayments, general states. These are going to CRF, right? Yes. Interest and repayment, 2030. Interest and repayments. Figure me. Interest and repayment general value.
2013. I hope we are not sleeping. We are with you, sir. No, sir, we are, we are with you. Go dealer license fees. That's an ammunition fee. These two are also going where? CRF. They are going to CRF, CRF. CRF. Pick up. Fifty thousand. Five thousand and fifty thousand. Next line I have is tariffs. Okay, tariffs. Okay. Tariff is coming away, right? Federation. Federation. Figo. 80,000. Let's see. Yes, 88. Eight. Next item. <coughs> you go back to the slide. Exercise duties. Federation. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. What is what is exercise duty, sir? It's also part of the tariff duties that are collected on some kinds of goods that are accepted in the country. And these are basically on products that are not being produced within the states, within the country. Okay, can you, can, uh, can you give an example of that, Sabi? Just to back it up with the example. Okay. Have uh, this type of um, products. Let me see the part of the consumables that we are not being produced. So when I remember, we I will come up with the types of things All right, sir. that we are being paid on this. So value. Thank you, sir. Ninety. Oil pipeline license fee. Federation account. Federation. Federation account.
Bingo. Forty thousand. Next line item: Treasury bill issued and treasury bill repaid one sixty okay. and sixty. Because treasury bill issued. Issue Same would be what revenue or expenditure. Revenue. 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 What about CRA? repaid? Will be expenditure. expenditure. Then repeat. Let's just bring the repeat down to expenditure here. Treasury bill repeat. Six sixty thousand. 16,000, let's put it in bracket. Next. Registration and license fee. Registration and license fee. License fee. That is going where? Sorry. 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 Here we go. 60,000. Who do I export and who do I export for the most? Sales of crude oil for exports and for yeah. domestic consumptions. Federation. Okay. Crude oil. Is it sales? Ordinary crude oil. Sales. sales, sales. Crude oil. Okay. Sales for exports. And sales. Domestic consumption. So, value Next. I'm for this educational receipt. I'm for this educational receipt. Yeah, right. Receipts, inflow. No expenses. Value. Ten thousand. Okay. Reimbursement, miscellaneous income. CRX. Pico. What's next to anything the familiar says to? I didn't get that. 2030, 30, 30, 30, 30. Rent of oil well, rent of oil ground, royalties for extraction of oil. Federation. Federation account. Thank you. 
What's the third one? I mentioned three. Royalties of oil sources. Extraction of oil. Bingo me. Twenty, fifty, and sixty. So charge on pioneer companies. Self. Federation, Federation, Federation account. So <coughs> Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. P. Sorry. Sorry. P. Of. Armed forces. P. Oh, I think police. Police. That. Police personnel. Police personnel, foreign service officers, and residents of FCT. Foreign service officers. Foreign service officers. Yes. And yeah. be of residents of FCT, right? Yeah. How fast is this now? Hey, hey, Followed by police, police is 800. Okay, police service officers 700. Okay, SCT residents 600. Orders. Order P. 20,000. Federation account. Federation account. Order P. How much? 20,000. 20,000. 20, Sierra. Sierra. Okay. Says of boarded vehicles. Hundred thousand. Is it coming to Federation or CRM? CRM. Hundred thousand. Uh, 
petroleum profit tax, company income tax. Federation okay. account. Federation account. PPC. CIT. Here you go. 65. Other capital receipts. 90,000. Where is it going to? It's going to be the development, development bond development. account. So it's an outflow from the capital reserve account, but it goes to the development fund account. Bingo. Ninety thousand. Ninety thousand. I said, I want to get say that. Even if you want me, I know it from my phone that you can't check. I don't know from my phone. You know that you can't check. What's that talk about? Transport to Development Fund. Development Fund. So this will now be from where? It will now be outflow here, right? Yes, sir. Latifa, I mean Queen. Queen, your background distraction is affecting. So, what is the value? Next, transfer to contingencies fund. Where are we treating this? CRF. 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 So it should be removed from CRF. Value. I didn't get that. Forty thousand. Forty thousand. Recording has been detailed. Development. Recurrent expenditure. Yeah. Ah, See our inflow or outflow. Okay. 
Alt true, alt true. Are you sure it's two seven one fifty? One fifty. We call it as the one fifty thousand. It's one fifty thousand. Yes. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Thirty seven one fifty thousand. Salary is an allowance of the three officers. CRA. CRA. Inflow or outflow? Outflow. 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 Figure. 50,000. PHCN capital development, capital expenditure on dams. Develop uh -huh. development on DRS. Development. Yeah, development. Which one? Development. 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 Transport from CRA. Where is transfer to CRA? What is the value? Yeah. Not bring the second leg. Nine thousand. Ninety. Then we have an outflow, right? P is C N. Then what? Capital expenditure on downs. Capex on down. Value. Any other item? No, oh, sir. sir. That's all. Okay, revenue allocation formula is as follows. 13% of oil proceeds as derivation, 7% FR uh, custom cost of collection, and 4% FRS cost of collection before the sharing formula. So let's go and do calculations before we close the accounts. Let's have this page as workings. We have 13 percent derivatives. So 13 percent derivatives. We said these are oil sources expenditure. Now let's go and bring all oil sources uh, all all oil sources revenue. Import, export, they are not relating to oil. Oil pipeline, oil pipeline license fee. Oil pipeline license fee, that's one. Sales of crude oil for export, sales of crude oil for domestic consumption. Sales of oil of oil. Okay, from here, sales of crude oil. 
domestic right rent yes oil yes. no no so charge is not there yes Okay, other thing. Which other one is really one? Okay. That's also. So let's take that of first one. Import export time. I can't hear you, sir. So we want to pick that of first one. These are first one collection time. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Your voice is faint. Uh, could you? Hello, can you hear me now? We can hear you better now. Yes, sir. sir. We can hear you now. So we are moving on to custom cost of collection, export duties, import tariff, excise. They are part of custom, right? Yes, sir. Let's see, custom is 7%, right? Yes, sir. Custom cost of collection. Any other custom? Coin pipeline for the same coin. So charge not custom. Other thing is not custom. CPT not custom. CIT not custom. Now it's remaining there. FRS, right? I have a drawing asking me that. Other things. Are we together? Yes, sir, we are. And we have CIT. Uh, hello. Hello, sir. Hello. The only the pay, the only pay that the FRA is supposed to collect is that of the FCT. This pay should belong to state. So I think we should leave that one for the SDIR. I didn't get you clearly. I said this other pay here, that is the other pay of 20,000 is supposed the one collected by the state government. The only one that we know that is collected by the FRS is the one of the FCT. So I don't think this other pay should be there. It is only the one that is collected so by as the FRS. The cost of collection. Yes. F I R S. I come with you. Okay.
Okay, your question. So just uh, uh, something I've seen. This other pay is the one collected by this SBIR, not the FRS. The one collected by the FRS is the one for the FCT. You did not pick that one. You should have, shouldn't have taken this. This one is collected by the state government or the state board. We did not pick. Which one do you say we did not pick? Okay. That is under the consolidated revenue. You have other payees there. You see payee of the armed forces. These ones are the ones collected by the FIRS, not this one here. Other payee is collected by the state government. Yes. The one yes. collected by the FRS is this one here, under S, uh, CRF. This C CRF, all these cost yeah. of, uh, sorry, all these collections yeah. were meant for the federal governments and not for, uh, not for federation accounts. Are you there? Yes, I, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. These are for the federal government, not for the federation accounts. Oh, I, the, did I get your I, question clearly? These ones are collected by the FRS. That is for the armed forces, for the police personnel, they are collected by the FRS. That's what I'm saying. But this one by of other payees are the ones okay, collected by the Okay, okay. You mean other payees here? Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, I get your question now. Where do we put it here? Okay, not, okay, 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 okay. I've gotten your question. I've gotten your question. CIT. Now let's sum this together. This together and this together. Thirteen percent derivative. This will now be equals to 0 0.13 multiplied by the total here. This is the cost of collection, 89 and 50. Cost of collection, are we following? Yes, 13% derivative. Nine fifty. We have custom cost at seven percent. Custom, cost of collection, at 7%. So this will be equals to 0 0.07 multiplied by 320, we have 22,400. I hope we are still following. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
then FRS cost as four percentage. This should be equal to 0 0.04 of 95,000. We have 3,800. F, uh, F, uh, 4%. 3.8. Summation of this, less this. We are having net of 1 million and 4,750. Are we following? Yes. Okay. Formula. Among the federal government, state government, and local government. What are the rates given to us? Fifty-two point six eight. Federal government fifty-two point six eight percentage. States. 26. 26.7 20.6 20.6 are not two. All right. So this will now be equals to 52.68 over 100 multiplied by the balance. This will be equals to 26.72 divided by 100 multiplied by the balancing figure. And this will also be equals to 20.60 divide by 100 multiply by this figure here. So these are the allocations from the federation accounts. Federal government will take 59.302.30. State government will take 268.469, while local government will take 206. Now, we said from this, this one is going to, is going to federal government. So we now come here, and that is what is constituting our what? That is what is constituting our at six, which is transfer allocation from, direct allocation from where? From the federation account. Allocation from, Federation account. That is amounting to five two nine three zero two five two nine three zero two points twenty three zero. Are we following? Yes, sir. Then we sum all these together. This is our total revenue. Then 
then we list our expenditure. Not carry down. Are we there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And lastly, let us bring. Let us close our accounts on that development fund account. Let's bring it here. We sum this. And we less. this so we have been closing balance of 25,000. Any questions so far? Your question, Juliet. Sir, why did you take the figure from this federation, FIRS? Why did you take the money from the federation money as? Why did you take the figure from this federation as I look as revenue? To CRF. To, to CRF. To Okay, it's one of the first revenue. Don't forget that this federation account is the general pool for federal government, state government, and local government. Do you remember that? Yes, and sir. we're told that the balance after deducting cost of collection will be shared among the three chests of government federal government, state government, and local government. So this balance that we brought here from here to the federation account, this simply means that the federal government is having their own share from the federation account. And the account being prepared by the federal government is what is known as consolidated revenue fund accounts. And this allocation from the federation account is regarded as a six under the Fed Consolidated Revenue Fund account. Let me take us back to our sources of revenue. Federal government accounts or Consolidated Revenue Fund accounts, it sees direct allocation from the Federation account at the prevailing rate. And that is what we brought to the Consolidated Revenue Fund account. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, please go back to your slide. I want to ask question. Okay. Can you show more light on this cost of connection? Does it mean that FRS took 4%? They get their own share from the collection of those taxes that they collected is 4%. Like this, this 38,000 are recorded with their own account. The 4% is from the questioner. It was a sharing ratio. Yeah. And I want, to, I want to show more light on this cost of collection. Does it mean that okay. it's their own part of their own share after collecting this no. money? It's not share. It's a form of expenditure that the customs were using to carry out the their collection for 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 custom and FRS to generate this revenue 
to the government. So they will need 4% of the revenue to serve as their expenditure on getting this money to the government. Part of it is fueling and, and some other expenditure that may be needed, which may not be catered by the federation account. And don't forget that these people are federal government workers. And as they are federal government workers, their own uh, function is to work alongside with the federation account cost of collection. They are one of the revenue collection agencies. So this percentage we have been given to them as the other, source, other expenditures that they are going to spend on having collections for these categories of revenue. And it is being stated under the law. It's the law that governs it for this collection. Why 13% is being generated, collected from the states where the oil were being extracted from. Uh, and this 13% is going to the states where all these oil sources were being derived. Is that clear? Yes, sir. This is it here. 13% of revenue derived from oil sources goes to the states from which it is obtained. And this is in accordance with the principle of derivation. Why 7% and 4% of the gross revenue in the federation account are allocated to customs and federal inland revenue services respectively? The rates stated above are first line charges, they are expenditure. That is 13% derivative sources of adjusted deducted in the oil sector revenue collected from oil proceeds. Why 7% and 4% of other revenue receipts are taken out of the non-oil collections. So they serve as cost of generating the revenue to the government. Any other question? Hello. No, just a request uh, to remind actually to send the uh, Excel. You're working, sir. Okay, uh, not only the workings, the slide. I think I'm here to send the slide as well. I'm yeah. going to send it. To yes. You. I will send it to you immediately after this class. Any other question? Please, sir. Uh, can you also send the one for next class? Uh, that that's supposed to have been sent before now. So the 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 normal practice. Or the usual practices or, or not before the class, the material supposed to have been shared across, and latest period should be Thursday. Latest by Thursday, supposed to be having the materials for the next class. So, do you get that? Yes, I do. Thanks. All right. Any other question? Uh, just one more thing, sir. Uh, if it is expedient, uh, please, if we could have the outline for this diet so that uh, we can uh, maybe adequately before before the class, so okay. that if there are any gray areas we can ask. All right. Okay. So that will be also be done. Please, Mr. Precious, you can remind me that. I'll do that on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Any other question? Tapis, can you open the next, the third slide, the third at the second calculation? I want to check something. Okay. Can you see that? Hello, can you see that? Yes, 
Any other question? All right, in the absence of no question, so this is where we are going to end the class. But before we go, I'm giving us practice question assignments to do. We have more, two more questions after this one that we've solved to lay our hands on. Question one, you have the information from the office of the Accountant General of the Federation for the month of May 2011. You have your inflows and outflows. You are required to prepare the Federation account and consolidated revenue fund account for the month of May 2011. Question two, you have the following information which were recorded by the Treasury Department of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the month of April 2011. All information were provided. Federation account as at March 2011, Consolidated Revenue Fund as at March, Development Fund account as at March, Constituency Fund account as at 31st March 2011, we are given. You are required to prepare the Federation account, Consolidated Revenue Fund account, Development Fund account, and Contingency Fund account. Please, submission on or before Thursday. You can write screenshots and send to the WhatsApp group for recommendation. Thank you all for your time. See you Thank in the you. next class. Thank you, sir. Very, very Thank informative you. class. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much, sir, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.